Hi friends, welcome back to the course. So today we will be doing a problem uh, from gate 2015. So the problem look like this. We have a massless rigid road here. The point to be noted is that this is very important. We are talking about a massless rigid road. The key takeaway from this particular word is that when you are computing the polar moment of inertia for the whole system we don't have to account for the polar moment of inertia contribution from this particular road since it is massless because polar moment of inertia j in a general sense it is nothing integral r square dm integrated throughout the mass of the object since it's massless j of the road will be zero again the word small oscillations we will take into account of this phrase small oscillations when we will be solving the problem and they are asking us to calculate the natural frequency in radians per second here also we have to pay attention in which units actually they are asking us and frequent asking us the frequency so the units of the frequency should be radians per second okay so um, the key takeaway is that we have to pay attention to each and every detail in the question uh, this the beauty of this particular question is that each word carries us a lot ca tells us a lot of things or helps us in, a, in 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 many ways to solve the problem now let's go ahead and solve this so um, as you can see here first uh, to calculate the natural frequency of any system first we have to draw what will be the equilibrium state for this particular system this is the system now for this particular system equilibrium state will be something of this so this mass will slightly move downwards and the spring will be in the state of compression and let delta be that small inclination or the um, small displacement um, in the initial state so as you leave the system as such then your system won't be like this it won't be like this gravity will be acting on the system so the system will be slightly tilted by an amount delta as shown in this particular figure because in the initial lectures i talked about the importance of trying to derive the equations or try to derive the equations from the point of equilibrium from the state of equilibrium because um, our origin should be always from the state of equilibrium as i explained in the initial videos now coming back to this problem now this is the initial state now we have to define a coordinate uh, because how many degrees of freedom are there in the system first of all again this is a single degree of freedom system i can show you that because if i draw a line like this let's say this is not a line let's say now from this equilibrium state this is the equilibrium state from this equilibrium state my system is getting displaced by amount theta then this is the particular degree of freedom which can tell which can completely define the state of the system i don't need any other parameters I, once theta is known how the amount by which this particular mass comes down it is known the amount by which the spring gets compressed it is known so everything is known so this is a single degree of freedom system so now to calculate the natural frequency of this particular system we should establish a equation a differential equation using newton's principles in terms of theta make sense because we this is a single degree of freedom system now let's do that what i just told let's try to do that okay let's say this is our equilibrium position what actually happens at here is the moment mg times 2r is getting balanced 
with k delta r times r because the both moments are getting balanced at this equilibrium state so this expression if we make use of this particular expression so we will start from here so this is what i explained in the previous slide i am disturbing the system by a small amount of theta now let's talk about what are the different kind of forces that will be acting on this road on this massless road since the spring is in state of compression it will try to push the road so that's why i've shown it like this so the spring will try to push the road in downwards and here is a mass so mass will try to rotate the whole system in this direction so mass will try to rotate the system in this direction while the spring force will resist that particular rotation okay so this is pure rotation about a single point about which this point now we know if we have to write newton's equations for pure rotation about a point then we need to calculate the polar moment of inertia of the whole system about the point now what are the elements in the system you have a spring then you have a road then you have a point mass i will just call it a point mass okay the spring is massless so that if uh, the contribution of this particular thing to the total g the total polar moment of inertia of the system will be zero now coming to road again road is massless so that too won't have any contribution towards j now the point mass will have a definite contribution see this is a point mass this is situated at a distance of 2r so the polar moment of inertia of the system about this point if i call this this is very important if i call this point o this pivot point o then this j is the polar moment of inertia of the whole system about the point o it will be mass times the distance squared distance is towards so squared will give you j so just to sum up what we are told up to now we calculated the equilibrium state we figured out how many degrees of freedom are there in the system then we figured out what kind of motion the system will be undergoing we talked about it will be undergoing a rotation about a point then we uh, went ahead and calculated the polar moment of inertia of the total system about that particular point well and good now let's go ahead and equilibrium position this is our equilibrium position those equations okay so as we told this is the polar moment of inertia theta double dot will be the angular rate in theta let's say theta double dot is positive in this direction so this force mg mg then this distance is toward so this will give me the moment about the point o makes sense and in case if you are wondering why i am not taking the cos component there if i uh, take my mg force like this and then there is a there is a this particular angle will be my delta plus theta so in this equation should have been actually written more precisely the moment due to this particular force about the point should be written like mg is the force times the moment actually this is not the force this is the force acting in the vertical direction the actual force is mg cos delta plus theta into I'll just erase this portion or sorry so to delta into 2r and now we go back to the questions we are talking about small oscillations small oscillations means this delta plus theta is so small which means that when the argument of your cosine function is so small the cos 
of delta plus theta since it is small oscillations it can be approximated as one so that's why we are getting rid of delta plus cos delta plus theta term in in this particular term so see how we are effectively using the inputs from the question to frame our equation that governs the system now coming to the second term so now my system is disturbed by an amount delta plus theta then obviously the displacement the compression felt by the spring will be delta plus theta times r actually this, this angle is again delta plus theta this distance is this angle is delta plus theta and this distance is r so this will effectively give us the force acting on the spring now this is the force times the momentum which is r will give us the force component force component here makes sense I'm talking about when I from from the equilibrium position if we in uh, at the equilibrium position what actually happens I am this is a expression if this is the final expression so if we make use of this expression in the previous equation then we will end up with this kind of uh, an equation so finally the equation is j d double dot plus k theta r square is equal to zero if we compare uh, this with the standard equation like this where we know if, if the system equation is mx double dot plus kx equal to zero then omega n natural frequency is given by root k by m so in this case omega n in the unit radians per second will be given by this equation kr square divided by j and we know the value of k is 400 r square put it put it like that then j is j we told initially that it is m into 2 r whole square so since m is 1 it will be 4 r square so the answer is for this particular question is root root of 400 by 4 the and the units will be radians per second thanks thanks a lot